guys, how's it going? OPB here. Uh, current date is January 21st, 2022. Uh, this is going to be a World War III update. Uh, World War III Sit Rep Part 2 uh, video. Uh, recently, about, I don't know, about an hour ago. Um, while I was taking my last break of the day, just tidying up some of the tools on the job site and what have you, um, before I left, uh, I read an article um, about Russian uh, movement, troop movement, uh, etc. in Europe. Uh, new to the article, they had stated that Russia moved troops into Belarus. Now, if you recall, in my last video, um, I stated that I believe they're going to go no further than the Dnieper River. Dnieper, Dnieper River. Um, take and hold it about 40 to 50 kilometers, just uh, still within artillery range, support range, fire support range, um, and hold there and not advance anymore and basically sue for peace. Um, For, against or to the Ukrainians because um, I think I don't think Ukraine uh, and I think the rest of NATO knows that Ukraine cannot take on Russia one on one in a fight sorry but if my eyes are pretty squinty the sun's pretty bright right now um absolutely not. uh okay so Russian troop movements they've moved troops into Belarus as well um, this changes what I think is going to happen. Uh, the way it's going to go down now has substantially changed. Uh, I no longer think they're going to hold 40 or 50 kilometers past the Nefer River. I think they're going to completely into occupy Ukraine. Um, they now have troops on the north uh, of the Ukrainian border and the east of the Ukrainian border. Um, Obviously, they have Crimea, which is technically in the Ukraine, but they've annexed that a while ago. Um, things that, are, that went on down in Kazakhstan, uh, they've pretty much annexed that country. So you're starting to see the Soviet Union grow back to what it was. And as you recall, I said, watch the Balkan states. Uh, pay close attention to what's going to go on in the Balkan states. Uh, moving forwards, what's going to happen there? Uh, Latvia, Estonia, uh, Georgia, right? Uh, keep close eye on that. Um, now that they have basically on two flanks, have troops on the Ukrainian border, uh, I believe they're going to fully occupy the Ukraine. It's going to be a bloodbath, and that's going to be that. Uh, by the end of the year, I see Ukraine is part of the Soviet Union 2.0 again. Um, I still don't think that NATO as a whole is going to get involved. I think some countries will. Um, which countries? I'm not sure. Um, probably Spain. I know they, they've spoken up against what the Russians are doing. Uh, maybe Poland. Maybe Germany. Uh, you might see a little coalition formed there. Um, if you recall World War II, Poland got occupied and, uh, yeah, Warsaw and all that. Um, and Germany, I don't think is too fond of being formed into East and West Germany again. Uh, I don't think they want another wall in Berlin. So I think that would be a little, uh, coalition with the Spanish, the Germans and the Polish. Uh, you might see a uh, Scandinavian uh, coalition form. Um, Finland, Sweden, Norway. Uh, that might happen. I think if that happens, judging, judging by the roles of uh, certain militaries during the uh, Cold War, I believe Canada uh, will be very heavily aligned with the Scandinavian countries. Um, that's where our main forces were. Um, obviously, then you had Baden and uh, 
Megan Sullivan, where we had Starfighters and F5s uh, posted. Um, M. Lars, too, but that was more so armor. Anyways, getting sidetracked. Um, keep an eye out for countries pre positioning equipment. Uh, the UK has pretty much dropped off some uh, anti tank missiles um, to the Ukraine and pretty much said, You're on your own. Um, pay close attention to arms deals and if countries start pulling things out of war stocks that's when you know things are really going to go um equipment wise uh ukraine i don't really know how much they have in war stocks nobody really does um i don't really have that security clearance obviously to know that and if i did i couldn't tell you um so yeah um what i believe they have is a lot of early soviet equipment at best um, T-72s, T-62s, um, maybe T-55, T-54s, I doubt it though, those tanks are old, um, actually I just drove past a T-54, T uh, it was parked up in front of a surplus store, so I'm like, zombie apocalypse, guess what I'm taking, anyways, um, yeah, it's pretty cool, um, yeah, so T-54s, T-55s, if they even have any left. Uh, I don't think they have anything older than that. Um, I remember seeing videos in 2019 of trains in the Ukraine carrying uh, SE-100s, SE-152s. Uh, T-34-85s, um, T-44s, basically end of World War II, very, very early Soviet, um, Soviet Union, Soviet Union equipment, um, post-World War II, um, kind of equipment, well, the SU-100 was used during World War II, so it was the T-34, um, eighth, the T-34-85 was heavily used by the uh, Chinese and the North Koreans in the Korean War. Um, so that kind of gives you a date. You're looking at 50s, early 60s um, era stockpile. Um, can that fight a modern war if they had to? Um, you, your best hope with uh, crew in a T-34, uh, in all honesty, is mobility kills. Uh, take out the, the road wheels and stuff like that on on Russian tanks, but <laughs> you're in a hand crank turret against a guy with a uh, electro like a electronic turret. Like <sighs> as Iraqi saw well that went out when the Abrams crashed through their lines, right? Taking out three or four Iraqi tanks before they even knew what was, what was hitting them. And by then, their entire division or regiment was gone. Um, so stuff like that, you're going to want to watch out for. Uh, if you start seeing trains moving, if you start seeing equipment being pulled off, uh, monument mounds, stuff like that. Um, here in Canada, uh, out west, there's pretty much a British armored division. It's not manned. Uh, it's just equipment. They use it for training. It's got, um, I've seen some of it um, throughout the years. Um, I believe that if, as a Canadian, we start seeing um, that equipment being put into Canadian inventory or back in a British inventory even, um, or even Ukrainian inventory. I'm sure the Ukrainians wouldn't argue with some uh, Centurions or uh, Sheftons even. I think there's a couple of Sheftons out there. Um, yeah. Uh, even our old Leo 1s. Uh, the Leo, Leo 1 C2 Mexis, which is the last iteration of uh, the Canadian development of the Leopard 1 chassis. Um, 
we had 114 Leo ones. I believe 66 were upgraded to the C2 Maxis, uh, if I remember correctly. Um, again, it's a 105 millimeter L7 gun. Uh, same gun that was on the Abrams initially. Uh, I believe the same gun. No, it wasn't the same gun uh, on Centurion. It might have been, been in the later models, an L7. Um, I know the earlier models was an 84 millimeter, and then they had a 90 at one point. I think that was the same gun that was on the uh, the M48 A5 or A3. I think was the same gun. Anyways, getting sidetracked. Um, I, I think a lot of countries should Ukraine start um, being overrun the way I think it's going to be. Uh, I think you're going to see a mad dash. Uh, to get them equipment, uh, a la World War II Lend-Lease program, right? Whatever you can spare, send to them, right? I think that's going to start happening. Uh, you might see war stocks might be hush-hush under the table. You never know, right? All of a sudden, you might see an entire newly raised Ukrainian armor division using M60s, uh, right? You might you might see that. You never know. Um, Again, Ukraine uh, does hold a lot of uh, industrial capability. Uh, Antonov, for example, is a Ukrainian company. Um, they manufacture the AN-124 Condor and the AN-225. The AN-225 is the largest transport aircraft um, in the world. Uh, yeah, it's the largest one in the world. Um, and then you have the AN-124. I've seen one of those things land at CFE Trenton uh, years ago. That, that was pretty cool. And a couple IL-76s as well. Um, Illusion, which is IL. The IL-76, uh, Candid, and the, the uh, A-50 Mainstay, which was the A-Blacks. Uh, there's an A-60 Airborne Laser. I don't know if that ever passed prototype. Um, who knows? Um, again, as I was saying there, I, I think that what's going to win World War III is not going to be who's got the latest and greatest stuff. Um, I think it's going to be, what can we build that's good enough to get the job done, but it's not going to cost us an arm and a leg? Because uh, if you start losing $550 million aircraft per engagement... That's going to add up real quick. Meanwhile, you can build a $30,000, a $30 million fighter and uh, lose those, or you build a $5 million drone. Um, now, I'm not saying a drone is to be able to dogfight, but there's no reason why a drone can't intercept transport aircraft. Keep that in mind. There's no reason why a drone can't engage ground targets, which has the highest combat losses uh, during the Gulf War, was uh, the tornadoes. The tornadoes and the Jaguars that were striking the Iraqi air defense sites and ground targets. Um, I, I, I think if you're going to want to look at how things are going to play out, uh, I think the Gulf War is a good place to start. Um, I just don't think it's going to end the way the Gulf War did. I think it's going to turn into a stalemate at one point. Much like World War I did, I think both sides are going to start digging in. And I don't think that it's going to go very well. I think it's going to be a long, drawn-out fight if it does get to that point. Um, again, as I said in the previous video, um, there's already um, advisors basically special forces they're uh, training the Ukrainian people uh, both national troops and probably um, civilians uh, saboteurs uh, underground resistance fighters uh, Wolverines right but uh, yeah I, I think they're doing that kind of stuff right now um, again so I'm going to leave this at that that's just a, an update on a little bit of information too in there uh, on what I think is going to go down. Um, I'm going to, as I get 
read new news. I'm gonna adjust what I'm thinking is gonna play out. Um, you can check me over on BitChute. Um, it's the same name, OPB, Ontario Preparedness and Bushcraft. Uh, you can check me on Instagram, uh, OPB underscore survival. Um, I do have a Patreon. Stay posted for that. Um, it's not, nothing's updated yet. Again, I've been working like a dog, so I haven't really had time to post anything there or figure out how to post it. I'm not that tech, that tech savvy, savvy uh, when it comes to computers like that. Um, I'm still trying to figure it out. I just honestly have not time to look at it. I'm pretty sure it's probably easy. Um, so yeah, stay posted for that. And uh, yeah. Uh, also, there's uh, gonna be a store coming up that I'm putting together. Um, you can find the link on my Instagram page. Uh, it's not, the link's there, but it's not actually working right now. There's something wrong with it. Um, I gotta do some tech support stuff uh, tonight. So stay posted. I'll uh, make a video when I when that's up and running. Uh, it's just got stuff that I used to use and all that on there. Um, not used equipment, but like stuff that I've tested and evaluated throughout the years that I like. Um, that's worked for me. Some of it I still have, some of it I don't. So yeah, stay posted. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you. OPB, out.